Dear students, welcome back to the online lecture series on Biotechnology 8. So in this video lecture, we are going to discuss about a topic called L-glutamic acid production. So industrial biotechnology that talks about the production of important uh, biological products from microorganism, strain improvement, screening of microorganism, uh, production of production process of the metabolite through bioreactors, different types of bioreactor that only we are discussing in the uh, industrial biotechnology. Especially in this video, we are discussing the monosodium glutamate production from Carnibacterium species. So glutamic acid is an important uh, amino acid. Commercially, it is being uh, used uh, right now. Uh, it is being pr produced with a bacterium species called Carnibacterium, sometimes E. coli also being employed. The genetically modified E. coli is being employed. But the glutamic acid uh, was originally discovered in the year of 1908 by Dr. K. Ikeda from Japan. Uh, he isolated uh, the monosodium glutamate, that is glutamic acid, from a marine alga. Later on, he also discovered that glutamic acid, after neutralization with castic soda, uh, it can produce a new entirely delicious taste, con taste containing a molecule called monosodium glutamate. So this molecule is being employed in most of the food sector, e even in the uh, uh, in the commercial packed food items and uh, in the street food also in hotels this monosodium glutamate which is simply called as typically it is uh, ajinomoto which is a enhancing compound it is a taste enhancing compound which is being used for the uh, to attract the con consumers the big breakthrough in the production of monosodium glutamate was the isolation of a specific soil inhib inhabiting gram positive bacterium that is called Carnibacterium glutamicum. So, Carnibacterium glutamicum is the uh, microorganism bacteria which is used for the production of glutamic acid, which was discovered by Dr. S. Ukada and Dr. S. Kinoshita in, in the year of 1957. So, you, you, are, you should also note with the different uh, scientist name and the year in which they have discovered the concept. The successful commercialization of monosodium glutamate with this bacterium provided a big boost for amino acid production and later with other bacterium like E. coli as well. So we can use any kind of microorganism but if the microorganism is having the capacity for the production of a specific uh, metabolite then we can employ that or else the genetic modification has to be taken and that uh, basic E. coli strain can be used for production of the glutamic acid. So this slide that is showing the structure of glutamic acid and this slide is showing the picture of commercial glutamic acid in the form of powder crystals. You can see in the all the fast food centers they are all uh, using in a pinch amount of this they will use for cooking the fast food items like fried rice, uh, noodles, chicken rice, chicken noodles. So which will enhance the taste of the food. So this slide talks about the biosynthetic pathway of uh, glutamic acid production. In the first the glucose uh, is broken down into C3 and C2 fragments by glutamic acid producing microorganism during the pathway of uh, M10 Meyer Parnas that is EMP pathway and TCA cycle. So during the TCA cycle only this glucose is converted into pyruvate in the glycolysis process glucose is converted into pyruvate and that pyruvate enters into TCA cycle and then during the TCA cycle glutamic acid is produ products produced. This is the uh, concept of biosynthetic pathway of uh, glutamic acid production by any kind of microorganism. But the level and quantity of the glutamic acid production will vary with uh, species of with specific species of the microorganism. So the reactions of EMP pathway are more common under conditions of glutamic acid production. The key precursor of glutamic acid is alpha ketoglutarate. If alpha ketoglutarate is produced, then it will be converted into glutamic acid in very simple manner which is formed in the TCA cycle via citrate, isocitrate and alpha-ketoglutaric acid. 
So the last step is catalyzed by the enzyme called NADP dependent glutamate dehydrogenase enzyme. So this enzyme is very very essential for the conversion of the glutamic acid from the um, alpha ketoglutarate. So this slide that uh, shows the metabolic pathway you can see here car carbon dioxide is there so that carbon dioxide uh, and uh, sunlight and uh, water molecule that converts uh, into glucose molecule and that glucose molecule that is broken down in the uh, glycolysis process which yields the pyruvate molecule then the pyruvate uh, in the mitochondria that enters into mitochondria and uh, uh, this enters into the new pathway called TCA cycle. So this pyruvate will convert into oxaloacetate uh, or else the pyruvate will convert into acetyl-CoA, that acetyl-CoA convert into citrate either uh, the py from pyruvate to acetyl-CoA or oxaloacetate to citrate that will be, con that will be taken place and uh, subsequently the acetyl coa converted into I citrate and then citrate is converted into isocitrate and then isocitrate is converted into oxalo oxoglutarate and oxaloglutarate is converted into glutamate so this glutamate is is a single step process that is a, that the enzyme called nadp dependent glutamate dehydrogenase that converts glutamate into glutamic acid for the uh, high content of glutamic acid production there are certain important factors that are controlling the production of glutamic acid that we'll see one by one. So through the biostein deficiency, we can control, we can uh, overproduce the glutamic acid by a specific microorganism or through the addition of penicillin as it is an antibiotic which controls the unwanted production of microorganism which uh, uh, enhances the activity of uh, certain bacteria like E. coli or Cornibacterium species. Through the addition of saturated fatty acids or fatty acid derivatives which enhances the production of glutamic acid or through the oleic acid deficiency in the oleic acid oxotrophs through the glycerol deficiency in glycerol oxotrophs so these are all the different factors that improves the glutamic acid productions and conditions of productions the, talks about uh, carb carbon source so glucose and sucrose are frequently used so these are the carbon source However, starch, hydroly hydrolysate, fructose, maltose, ribose and xylose are also used less frequently. Moreover, sucrose, sugarcane molasses, sugar beet molasses can also be used. So whatever the molasses can be used, uh, both different types of any kind of uh, molasses which contains high biotin content. So penicillin or fatty acid derivatives must be added to the fermentation medium when these molasses are used in the medium preparation. For industrial production, generally canned molasses or starch hydrolyzate are used. Coming back to the uh, nitrogen sources, nitrogen source is very very important for any kind of uh, fermentation process because uh, to improve or to multiply the microorganism species to duplicate cellular cell duplication, uh, the DNA duplication or cellular component duplication, everything is important. For all these things, nitrogen source is very, very important. So this nitrogen source can be supplemented with ammonium sulfate, ammonium chloride, ammonium phosphate, aqueous ammonia, ammonia gas or urea. So the different types of uh, nitrogen sources can be used. Although large amount of ammonium ions are necessary, a high concentration of it inhibits the growth of the microorganism as well as the yield of the glutamic acid even though if we use uh, more amount of ammonium salt that will also have a negative impact on glutamic acid production and uh, uh, microorganisms growth therefore suitable amount of ammonia should be added as the fermentation progresses so these salts also helps in the controlling of the ph level growth factors so the important growth factor is biotin biotin is very very important for the uh, improvement of the uh, to take to take the next level to the fermentation process biotin is very very important for glutamic acid production it is optimal concentration uh, depends upon the carbon source used in case if we use 10 percent glucose its requirement is 5 milligram per liter so biotin should be added 5 milligram per liter if 10 percentage of glucose is employed in the fermentation medium in media with lower glucose concentration 
it is considerably lower amount of biotin should be used some strains require l cysteine as an additional growth factor other than e coli or cornibacterium species if we use that require l cysteine that is an essential amino acid for that kind of uh, microbial species and oxygen so as it is a aerobic uh, a fermentation oxygen concentration is very very important for the uh, proper fermentation process but if we give more con more level of oxygen that also have negative impact on production of glutamic acid so optimal level of oxygen should be maintained so here you can see if you just read the uh, sentences that the oxygen concentration should neither be too low or too high excretion of lactate and succinate occurs under oxygen deficiency whereas excess oxygen under ammonium ions deficiency causes growth inhibition and production of alpha ketoglutarate in both the cases glutamic acid yields are low so ph optimum ph for the growth of the glutamic acid production is 7 to 8 and it is controlled by the addition of ammonium salt whatever ammonium we are adding that is that is controlling the pH level that was we have discussed. So this slide that recalls whatever the uh, important uh, source of that we have discussed in the previous slides. First one is medium composition, carbon source is important. For carbon source we can employ glucose, fructose or sucrose. Molasses also we can give a crop hydrolysate also we can use. For nitrogen source we can use urea or ammonium different, uh, different uh, concentrations of ammonium salts we can use. And excretion induction, biotin is uh, be, being employed which is important factor for the growth of the microorganism like Carnibacterium E. coli and addition of detergents, antibiotics is very very important in case of uh, Carnibacterium we can use penicillin for controlling the other unwanted organisms. So in temperature controlling is very very important. So in the cultural conditions are the pH should be 7 to 8, temperature should be 30 to 34 degrees Celsius, oxygen requirement is necessary because it is a aerobic fermentation process operation mode is stirred tank bioreactor or batch uh, reactor or fed batch reactor so during the downstream processing after the production is over in the downstream process the, these steps will be followed for the glutamic acid uh, uh, cultivation that is called cell separation concentration crystallization and ph decrease so inoculum is prepared with a suitable strain of uh, Carnibacterium glutamicum. You can also, you, you should always remember the bacterium species which is used for glutamic acid production that is called Carnibacterium glutamicum. It uh, is selected and is inoculated into the sterilized medium. So this is, this talks about uh, the inoculum preparation for the fermentation process. The culture is incubated up to 16 hours at 35 degrees Celsius. After sufficient growth occurs, approximately 6% by the volume of inoculum is added to the production fermenter. Once the inoculum is prepared, it is transferred to the production media. Then fermentation process takes place. The fermentation is carried out approximately 40 to 48 hours, uh, means two, 2 days at uh, 30 degrees Celsius temperature. The pH is adjusted to 7 to 8, uh, 8 uh, unit and the urea is added intermediately uh, during the fermentation process approximately 50 percentage of the supplied carbohydrate is converted into glutamic acid so after the fermentation process once it is gets over 15 50 percentage of the given carbon source will be entirely converted into glutamic acid the broth contains glutamic acid in the form of its ammonium salt and it, next step is recovery in a typical downstream process, the bacterial cells are separated and the broth is passed through a basic anion exchange resin which is uh, ion exchange chromatography. Uh, that process will separate the bacterial cells and glutamic acid. So glutamic acid anions gets bound to the resin and ammonia is released. So this ammonia whatever is being released out which can be recovered via distillation process and can be reused in the fermentation. Again it can be reused. It cannot be uh, eluted out or um, excreted into the environment. So the elution is performed with the sodium hydroxide to directly form monosodium glutamate uh, in the solution and to generate the basic anion exchanger. 
From the elute, the monosodium glutamate may be crystallized directly followed by further conditioning steps like decolorization and serving to yield a food grade quality of monosodium glutamate. So whatever the monosodium glutamate is crystallized which is, which is not in the food grade uh, for human consumption. So further conditioning step is required for converting it to more uh, food grade quality. So this uh, picture that talks about the full overview of uh, uh, glutamic acid production, how far it is being uh, uh, from the sterilization stuff, from the starting point of sterilization till the recovery process, how far the, the different steps and process are there in the glutamic acid production, that in the detailed manner it can be, it, it is being presented. Thank you.